Hello all, Glenn Gordon here, here again, retired professor, avid surfer, and I'm happy to have you back to another version of my vlog titled The Surfing Life. As with the others, you're not going to see much action here. You're not going to see shredding, you're not going to see the beautiful waves of the world, or the young people that populate most of those waves. But the passion that those youngsters share is the same passion that I feel. So here you're going to get a veteran surfer's view of what it means to live the surfing life. I thought I would talk today about the best of the surfing in my region. That region is New England, the northeast corner of the United States facing the North Atlantic. And the best season for us is the fall when hurricanes can come running up the coast, sending in large swell to give us all sorts of excitement. Of course, we don't want those storms to come ashore, and we do think about the mariners that are out at sea if the storm stays afar. We all look for those moments when the hurricane swell comes ashore. In fact, the opening segment of this video is me surfing Hurricane Katya in 2007. I remember making that left going down the line and feeling the waves slapping me on the back. Now, had I thought more quickly, had I had the skills, I might have stalled and let that wave cover me up. But to be honest with you, at the age of 60, my thought was more, I just don't want to get eaten by this wave. But as part of talking about hurricane surf, I thought I would read you a section from my book, the book titled Still Surfing Cold Water, in which I give a sense of the look and the feel of what it's like to be on a hurricane swell. So let me share that with you. I recall when Hurricane Isabel tracked north in 2004. The first of the swell arrived late in the day, and as the sun sank lower, the double overheads became burnished walls of energy. Hollowed out by an offshore breeze, these waves arced and crashed as the spray from their shoulders flew seaward from the tops as if they were a solid wall. I surfed them with 15 others at the home break. As the swell grew, the lineup moved out more than 100 yards off the peak. There, with plenty of room between surfers, one needed only wait briefly for the next set. Then each of us took his or her turn, paddling to match the speed of the oncoming wall of water. The exhilaration increased. A few more explosive strokes and the board would take up the momentum, advancing rapidly on its own as it began the slide down the watery slope. At that moment, the moment of truth, elation was like a drug. Rushing down the face of a small mountain of water, the feet are firmly set as the arms reach out. The legs absorb the forward thrust and set the rail for a turn to the left off the bottom. The image ahead is one of rapidly changing snapshots. A clean wall of water, someone paddling hard over to clear the top and be out of your way. The low sun ahead, a blinding ball of molten copper. A glance back to the right shows no one is following. The wave crashing just behind your shoulder is aglow with the heat of the setting sun and yours alone to enjoy. With a lean to the back and left, you guide the board up the face of the wave. At the top, a rapid twist of the torso aims the board downward again, and the thrill of the drop is repeated. Then, the rocks of the western jetty loom up ahead. No room for error here. Another bottom turn aims the nose past the rocks, and as you trim your weight forward, the board rockets ahead, clearing the jetty and its onlookers in an instant. Other surfers paddling out are avoided as you speed ahead and transition to the inside break. As the section jacks up, becoming more and more vertical, the speed increases, and the final 30 seconds seem the fastest of the wave. Finally, hundreds of yards down the beach and hundreds more inside, the wave ends nearly on the sand. This is hurricane surf. Such is East Coast surfing at its best when the promise of the hurricane season is delivered. Thank heaven surfers can't create the storms that make for such waves. Were that the case, there would be widespread devastation every year. So that's a piece from my book titled Still Surfing Cold Water. If you enjoyed that, you can get a copy of that book. I suggest you go online to rhodeislandsurfco.com. rhodeislandsurfco.com. That's a local surf shop that I like to support. 
We all like to support our local retailers, RhodeIslandSurfCo.com. You can also go on Amazon and find it as an ebook or as a paperback. I also wanted to share a bit of what our recent hurricane season looked like here in New England. Here's a list of the major storms that we reveled in in the summer of 2021. First, Tropical Storm Elsa, then Hurricanes Henri, Ida, Larry, and Sam. For me, the high points were four days of ground swell from Hurricane Henri, and then Hurricane Sam. I went down to Point Judith. The space between Point Judith and the Conant Avenue Reef further north is about a half a mile. And within that space, I shared an afternoon session with 110 of my best friends. Hurricane Ida, meanwhile, had driven me into the rock pile at the foot of Wikipog Point, where I just managed to keep out of trouble. Sadly, there was much too much trouble when Ida had come ashore earlier on the southern coast of Louisiana. These images are from Grand Isle on that coast, which was devastated by Ida, as was the native population in nearby Dulac. These people are struggling to survive. They have very little in the way of services, even these months after the event. Look at my comments below and you can find a URL with a organization that works directly with those communities to provide them financial support. And I invite you to do that. So there we are. If you've enjoyed this vlog, I ask you to subscribe down below and join me once again for another look at the surfing life. Meantime, keep paddling out.